welcome to Cinema Clips. Today, we're going to be looking at the 1993 to 2004 Frasier series. And I'm going to explain to you why I think it was a masterpiece. Now, in case you haven't seen Frasier or you've heard about it but you don't really know what it's about, I'm going to give a quick summary of what it's about without spoiling too much. So we first get introduced to our main character, who is a psychologist named Frasier, which shouldn't be too much a surprise if you knew the name of the show. We promptly get introduced to our main characters that would stick around for the whole show. We have Frasier's brother Niles, we have the father Martin Crane, Daphne Moon, the physical therapist, and oh wait, what's the dog's name again? That is Andy. Oh yes. We also have a few more background characters. We have Ross Doyle, we have Kenny, we have Bulldog, we have Gil, and there's many others, but I'm just going to mention a few that were bought at the radio station. The next big thing is the storyline. Now, it is way more in depth, but I will dive deeper later in the video. For now, I'm just going to give you a quick overview so it makes sense why this was such a good comedy series. So the series storyline kicks off when Fraser lets his father stay with him because he has severe hip problems that they explain. Anyway, Fraser doesn't like the thought of having his dad loose and wild in his apartment alone. I mean, no wonder why, just look at this place, it's amazing. Anyway, they eventually hire Daphne Moon as the physical therapist and the home caretaker, which Niles has a bit of a crush on. This is a really important factor throughout the series. Another thing why I think this series was so real well written is the development of the relationships between the characters throughout the series and also the individual character developments. Especially at the start, Fraser and Niles are portrayed as two snobby psychiatrists that look down on the general public. But as the series goes on, Fraser and Niles become more accepting of the lower class. This especially happens with Niles, who after. Oh, wait. I'll see. Sorry, I can't spoil everything. Also, another heartwarming factor in Fraser is the father and son relationship that they form over the series. Now, stories, plots, and relationships aside, I think one amazing thing about Fraser is the jokes. And you just have to hear them to know how good they are. Inspector, thank God you've come. Stop the watch. <laughs> Ross, I have a line here. It says. When she opened her lips, I caught a hint of some exotic accent. You'll notice it does not say, when she opened her lips, cheese fell out. Guess what I have? Two tickets to the Orpheus Chamber Orchestra. The Orpheus? Oh, Niles, nobody handles handle like they handle handle. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've always wanted to do this. Make a trip around the Greek islands. <laughs> was your hunting trip? Uh, came home empty-handed. Oh, dear. I guess that means for the next several weeks we'll hear your grouse about the grouse and carp about the carp. Oh, hey. Niles. <laughs> I hope you had the presence of mind to bring presence of mind. <laughs> I, I should fix a dumb dress and my sister can't even fit into it anymore. Audrey, you borrowed the dress, you tore it. As an old Greek haberdasher once said, Euripides, Eumenides. <laughs> Oh, hello, Niles. Hello, Fraser. May I join you? Or should I say, may we? <laughs> may we? <laughs> like this one time, there was this huge cheese platter out, and one of my uncles started speaking in cheese language. You know, like, instead of saying, hello, how are you? He said, hello, Havarti. <laughs> There's no one I enjoy partying with more than you, and I just hate to see you like this. Ooh. I... I can't bear it. <laughs> Now yes, I know there's lots of other comedy series that have got good jokes every now and again, but the difference with Frasier is the amount of levels of jokes. Like, I've seen quite a few of these episodes, and I can re-watch them and still laugh afresh at lots of the jokes I've never even heard of or kind of gotten. I think the way they achieve this is the healthy mix of slapstick humour with more play on words humour. Listen, that's all part of the thrill of the live performance. Butterflies in the stomach, sweaty palms, scratchy throat, pounding heart. I suppose you have all of those. I do now. <laughs> this is why I love Frasier. In shows like these, there's nothing like a good bit of drama every now and again. And I think Frasier has a good variety of this. From petty, more daily arguments, to arguments that are more character-driven, in-depth. Take us through the house and tell us what you think of Niles' art. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I 
I've been waiting to do that for a long time. Sorry, I couldn't help myself. Now, I'm going to wrap up this video, and I really would like to hear your comments and your thoughts on this. Like, did you like Frasier? Was it your kind of show? But I'd like to show some points that really add to the story writing of Frasier. Number one. A very firm and realistically looking daily life correction. Firm and realistic rich psychiatrist life. Also, each episode focuses on each person's perspective of the day, whether they be their little trouble or just what they are going through. Number two. Very well thought of jokes and play on words. Number three. Each character is well written with each with their own habits, flaws, quirks, and developments. Now, I'd really, as I said before, like to hear your comments and thoughts about this, and, well, see you in the next video. And cut.